What's up everybody, it's Charles. In this video, we are going to be installing a new downpipe and cat back exhaust on the FC Piero rusty old Mark V, lovingly known as the Rusto Mod GTI. We are going to be using the APR downpipe and an AWE cat back exhaust. All right, let's fire it up and see what happens. While we wait for our exhaust to heat up, let's check out this downpipe and exhaust we're gonna be putting on it. Here is our upper section of the downpipe. This is what will bolt to the turbocharger. And this is our catalytic converter section. It looks like they have an extra bung in here in case you wanted to put like a, a wideband O2 or something in it, which is pretty cool. We'll just probably go ahead and block this off and some hardware to install it. The rest of the exhaust is in this box. Let's open this small box here and see what's inside. Oh yeah, really nice exhaust tips. Our bag of clamps and hardware and instructions to install. And finally at the bottom, our exhaust. All right, now that our engine is up to temp and that exhaust is probably pretty hot by now, I'm gonna pull some of this stuff out of the engine compartment so I got better access to those top bolts of the downpipe. Gonna also pull the battery out and the rest of the tray. Now we're gonna be working this area back behind the engine. Of course, it's pretty hot, so we're gonna glove up, well, double glove up, I guess, see if we can't get those bolts out. There are four bolts that hold the downpipe to the turbocharger. These bolts are super rusted, as you can obviously tell, so we're gonna hope for the best on this. I have been saturating this for several days with penetrating oil, and then of course we got the car up to temp to get some heat on it. Three of these are pretty easy to get to if we have to take extra measures. A fourth one, not quite so much. So uh, let's hope for the best. I don't care if the stud comes out or just the nut, as long as it doesn't break, I'm a happy camper. Next, let's go ahead and take down the under panning on the side of the car. We also need to disconnect the rear O2 sensor. Remove the bracket at the subframe. Remove the cross brace mid car. Now this pipe is totally rotted out, so it's just kind of coming out in sections. Your pipe, if it's not all rusted and fallen apart, is going to come out in one giant piece. Well, here we are underneath the Mark V, and unfortunately, things didn't go exactly as I had planned. One of the studs broke. As long as it doesn't break, I'm a happy camper. I think the best case scenario for removing that would have actually been to weld a nut onto the piece of the stud that was sticking up. That'll get it super hot, as well as give you a surface to grab onto. Unfortunately, that doesn't always work out so well. So I ground that piece as flat as I could. Next step is gonna be to drill it out. Thankfully, I got a right angle drill and a box of new drill bits, and hopefully it comes out pretty easy. Also gonna put a magnetic tray underneath. That should catch a bit of the shrapnel that falls down. All right, so our stud is drilled out. Here's the remnants of it. This is why I also put this magnetic tray down so it captured all of that. Instead of trying to tap and re-thread the spot in the turbo, what we're gonna do is we're just going to put a bolt in it. This is a grade 10.9 bolt and M10 on one and a half. So it'll be a minor inconvenience if you ever have to take it back off, but at least it's gonna be all the same hardware. Now, when I drilled the stud out, I did a pilot hole with a 1 16th bit, stepped it up to 7 64ths, then 5 30 seconds, then 16 64ths. Then what I actually had to do is step up to quarter inch, but in order to get it to fit, I had to cut the bit down. Luckily this kit came with two. Then the final was a 3 8 hole that I also had to cut the bit down. But guys, thank goodness for this right angle drill because nothing else probably would have fit in there very well. All right, next we need to remove our oxygen sensors from our old cat and downpipe, or just cat in this case, to get ready to install them on the new one. Now you can break this stuff loose while it's on the car, but it, the area is a little tight. Also, if you have a vise, this is a really good place to use said vise. You also wanna try and avoid an impact like hitting your wrench with a hammer in order to get this oxygen sensor out. That can damage the oxygen sensor. You can use either a proper O2 wrench or a 22 millimeter, works really well on this application. 
and now we get to fight trying to get it loose. Sometimes you might even need to stand on it. All right, here's our front O2 sensor. Now, the cool thing about this car, the front and rear O2 sensors have different connectors, so there's no way you can really swap them around and get them plugged in. And we'll probably go ahead and put a little bit of anti-seize on the threads only of this oxygen sensor for the front. Grab our other pipe, and hopefully this one comes off too. Given the conditions of this O2 sensor and the state of the rest of the entire vehicle, Kind of surprised this actually came out. Now we can take these and get them in our new exhaust. Now that our nasty old exhaust is done and out of the way, let's get our APR downpipe and cat prepped to go in the car. Take our downstream O2, put a little bit of anti-seize on it, and go ahead and put our downstream O2 in. If you can't remember which is which, the downstream is the one connector with four pins. All right. We have an extra port in case you want to install something like a wideband O2. Luckily, APR includes a plug because we're not going to install that. Put a little anti-seize on it and plug our bunghole. For those of you that are 12, that is actually what it's called. All right, this is ready to go in the car. Next, we'll put in the section that actually goes to the turbocharger. Put our upstream O2 sensor in. This is prepped and ready to go. Let's get it in the car. I also went ahead and ran a thread chaser and lubricated the threads on the original studs. In a perfect world, I would actually rather replace these studs, but I was worried about even more breaking. Now that we have the downpipe bolted to the turbo, it's time to start putting all of our exhaust hangers on. From here on out, I don't like to tighten anything all the way until I have everything installed. That'll make doing our adjustments a bit easier. Also, this bracket can be installed either way. There's a longer flat piece that goes at the bottom. The side that has the shorter flat spot faces the top. Next, we have our bracket. Go ahead and install that. Next, we're going to bolt our bracket to our downpipe. Now, they give you this little unit here that's got two spacers. Use whichever one fits your car the best. For our application, the smaller spacer fits better. And this goes between the bracket and the downpipe. So we'll put our bolt a little bit through. We'll pull our downpipe out of the way. Put our spacer in, slide it through, and then I'm just going to leave it kind of like that. As we work our way back, we'll start to snug everything up a little bit at a time so that we get it installed nice and nothing's in a bind. Next, we're going to set our catalytic converter unit in. Then we'll install the bracket loosely. We'll just start these bolts and come back and tighten them in a minute. We can also now clock our catalytic converter, which is going to sit about like that. But before tightening that clamp, we need to get the rest of the exhaust in. Now it's pretty much just time to put everything back. We do have some new hardware. We're going to install a new bracket. This one came with new rubber hangers, and we're going to put a couple of new rubber hangers as we move back. Start by sliding our clamp onto our downpipe. I like to put a little lubricant on the ends of these. Makes it slide in much easier. This is just a little bit of dielectric grease. Next, we'll take our new bracket and install the section that goes into it. When going back together, we have to make sure that we get our fuel tank strap installed correctly. The easiest way to do this is actually to put the strap inside the bracket first and then put it up in the car. Now that that's all in place, we have this little reducer piece that goes from our APR downpipe to our AWE exhaust. So here you'll use your factory clamp. The larger piece goes into the APR downpipe.
Next, we're gonna put the decorative exhaust tips on and fine tune this adjustment here. We have two small clamps that hold the decorative tips on. Go ahead and put our clamps on. I'm already thinking we're gonna probably have to shift this exhaust over a little bit. I'll put one on and the other one on. Now from right here, it doesn't look too bad. It looks like we maybe need to rotate it counterclockwise just a little bit and perhaps shift it over to the driver's side a tad to make sure that the tips are level and even side to side. All right, that looks pretty good. There's still a little bit of fine tuning we're gonna do. These are actually engraved with the AWE logo on the top. So I left that sticking out a little bit. It'll be up to you on how far out or in you want your exhaust tips. I like to shift this over just a little bit more and then I think we're good to go. The final step is installing these little stoppers here on the end that go through the rubber hangers. Pretty easy, simply loosen that screw. Once that's on, we'll take the tool that they supplied and just go ahead and snug it down. And we'll get this one on. All right, there we go. Don't forget to plug in your two oxygen sensors. This is the downstream one. Now on the factory exhaust, there's a cross member piece that goes from here to here. It's held in with four 13 millimeter nuts. I didn't like the clearance between the bracket and the downpipe, so I went ahead and left it off. That's actually a pretty common thing to have to eliminate this back one. Otherwise, the, every time you accelerate hard, the exhaust is gonna hit it. We also have to plug in our upstream O2 sensor. Now I gotta put all this stuff back together. After we do that, it's time for the very first startup. worth noting is I actually weighed all of the parts that we took off and then put back on and you're saving about 20 pounds with this new setup over what the stock had. The factory muffler on this car is also the one that I cut open and did a video on. I'll be sure to link that up if you want to check that out. With that, I'm going to wrap it up there. Questions or comments, drop them down below. If you guys like this video or want to check out more Mark V stuff, I'll be sure to link that playlist up as well. This was a really fun project teaming up with FCP Euro to do these videos on a Mark V for you guys, even though the car was insanely rusted. And uh, by the way, big ups to FCP Euro for offering lifetime warranty on all the parts that they have. All right, so with that, I'm out. Have an awesome day, and I'll talk to you again next time.